I've played the absolute f***ing shit out of Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. In the two weeks I've had to do this, I've also downloaded f***ing loads of mods from the Bannerlord Nexus, of which there are already quite a hefty handful of. Some are general tweaks and quality of life improvements to the Bannerlord experience, while Tail Worlds understandably have their focus on other areas of the game. Some add flair to the combat, others play around with the strategic level of the game, and there's also one that turns every icon in every menu into butter. They're all really easy to install too, simply requiring you to, unless stated otherwise on the mods page, download a zip file and extract the folder within into the modules folder of the Bannerlord game directory, which you can access by right-clicking the game in your Steam library and selecting Browse Local Files. It's a piece of piss! So, in this Rock Paper Shotgun video, I'm going to be running you through a bunch of really shiny mods that I have installed and what I like about them. They'll be divided into three categories. Combat, Visuals and Quality of Life. And if you want to improve the quality of life of all of us over at Rock Paper Shotgun, be sure to like this video and subscribe so that our Google Metrics overlords allow us to eat. Zorbarax's Cut Through Everyone, made by Zorbarax, a modder you're going to be seeing a lot of in this video, stops your weapons from getting caught up on the first person they hit when you swing them. Blades getting stuck makes sense and keeps things balanced, but what if you want to charge into a mess of enemy soldiers, swinging in your great big axe and just mowing people down? Cut Through Everyone means your weapons will just pass through and f*** up everyone else standing in the general vicinity of your swings. Zorbarax's Deadly Horse Charges is a pretty simple mod with quite a significant impact. Basically, in the base game, horses don't feel like they do quite enough damage given they're these giant, heavy, fast, scary four-legged death machines. Deadly Horse Charges ties how much damage your horse does when it impacts an enemy soldier with how fast it's moving. And if you're at top speed, that means you can just fucking splat a guy or two if you hit them at the right angle. It makes the cavalry even more horrifying, and I vibe with that. Zorbrax's Shoulder Cam is a mod I've already covered in my Bannerlord Advanced Tips and Tricks video, but it's getting another mention here because I love it that much. Again, like many of Zorbarax's mods, it's quite a simple change that goes a long way. The default camera angle when you're in third person has the camera positioned on the back of your head. This mod changes it to a more dynamic, traditional, over-the-shoulder perspective, and your camera movements, as well as weapon swings, all add a bit of shake and sway, grounding you in the action a bit more. You can tweak the mod's config files too, altering whether, for example, the camera angle switches back to the standard one when you've drawn an arrow. Have you at any point while playing Bannerlord killed a looter and just felt like something was missing? Well, Jedi Josh920 did, and they've decided that that something was decapitation. The dismemberment mod is unfortunately not as diverse enough as to allow the lopping off of arms and legs, but the chance to decapitate enemies with fatal head blows when you swing your weapon left or right, a chance that's set to 100% by default, makes you feel even more like the brutal and bloodthirsty warlord you are. My personal advice for when you install this mod is to go into its configs file and set slow motion to true, because then you get to see heads rolling off of shoulders in gory, drawn-out detail. Do you want Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord to be more like Mountain Blade 2 Bloodborne? Well, you can't get a mace that turns into a buzzsaw on a stick yet, but what you can do, thanks to a Huang Jun Hao, is regain your health with every enemy you kill. If, like me, you play Bannerlord not for its intricate battle strategy, though I do enjoy that too, but instead go medi fucking evil on a gaggle of puny goons, then getting a bit of health every time you cut somebody down can help keep you in the fight for longer, and that makes you feel like a proper berserker of old. Another mod to get a second mention in my overall coverage of Bannerlord is Detailed Character Creation by Popo Wanobi. Bannerlord's native character creator is versatile, but still a little bit basic at the moment. This mod adds more body sliders, a few more hair colours, different eyebrow styles, and a few other bits and pieces which you can fully utilise to have more control over how you look in-game. 
Aesthetics are always important to me in games, and if they are to you too, then this mod is an absolute must-have. Having played around in Bannerlord's cheat mode, just to get an idea of everything, I know for a fact that banners are in the game thanks to seeing them in the world inventory, which makes a fair bit of sense given the name of the game is Bannerlord. They aren't readily accessible quite yet though, but because 8 Horde's Battlefield Banners 3.0 mod adds them in as usable right away. There are two versions of the mod, one that adds the, minor story spoilers, Dragon Banner, and one that adds banners of your own Kingdom logo. They can only be equipped by yourself and any other hero characters, but when they are, you can carry them around in battle and feel like a proper army. To access the banners, you'll actually need another mod that allows you to use the console, linked in the description next to this one, and input a console command to give you the banner of your preference. Sound the Alarm by The Wolf Panda is one of many mods which makes the visual information Bannerlord gives you a lot easier to see and keep track of. In this instance, it'll give you a pop-up window which freezes time in-game every time one of your settlements or clan members is attacked or captured, and it also tells you when kingdoms declare war on other kingdoms and when peace is made. If you're trying to be sweet with the Vlandians, for instance, and the Sturgeons, who in my game don't own any towns anymore, declare war, you know that squishing the weak little unit of 10 Sturgeon boys you've just happened upon is not only going to garner very little repercussions, but it is also a surefire way of making the Vlandians happy. Settlement icons in Bannerlord's base game are perfectly serviceable as is, but it's difficult to figure out if any given town or village has somebody with a mission for you without going all the way there to see, and that can often lead to disappointment and a lot of walking around and admiring the scenery. Pyrokinesis' Settlement Icons mod makes this infinitely easier and less time consuming by placing the blue exclamation mark associated with available missions and quests on the icons for each settlement that has available missions and quests. That's all it does, it just plonks a little bit of punctuation up there, but fuck me if it doesn't make things easier. One of the largest selling points of Bannerlord as a successor to Mountain Blade Warband was that it looked a whole lot prettier. And it certainly does, but what if it looked even prettier? There are plenty of shader packs out there, but Dro's lighting improvements by Drogon isn't one of them. All it does is tweak the in-game lighting to be more dynamic depending on the weather, time of day, and location. But by my eye, it makes the visuals overall pop a lot better, and the improvement couldn't be better showcased by comparing how your character looks in the inventory menu. This is without lighting improvements, and this is with. Look at that! Did you miss Sorbarax? <sighs> I did too. Here are two more of his mods, starting with Banks of Calradia. Are you a wealthy Bannerlord? Do you have a f load of money? Are you anxious about carrying all of that money around with you everywhere you go? Too far away from one of your settlements and don't want to leave your money there so that it's all spent on stuff? Put it in the bank! After a buy-in of 8,000 gold at any town, you'll be able to deposit money into the bank at that town. You can't access that money in every settlement, only the one you bank with, but that money is subject to interest, so you can chunk your savings into an account and wait for it to become more money. You can even take out loans if you don't mind taking a hit to your renown score, so long as you pay it back in 14 days, otherwise you're screwed. Be careful of sieges, theft and mismanagement though, because that can all impact your banked away funds. Zorbarax's training field lets you train your troops at the training field where you start the game. You can also do this at any area in any town. The training process is one that can lead to injury, so the longer you train your troops, the larger a chunk of them will need to rest before they're back in action, but every one of your troops will get a lovely chunk of XP, which you can use to upgrade them in the party menu. The cap on how long you can do this for is 24 hours, and you can only train your troops once every three days just to keep everything balanced, but it's a great way of improving the bog standard boys you just rescued from a roaming bandit party without necessarily risking horrible death at the hands of an enemy lord. 
Tournaments expanded by Brandon 37211 started life as a mod that turned on combat XP gain in arenas, a feature that was originally turned off in the base game. That's since been officially patched though, so now Tournaments expanded does some other things instead. It widens XP gain to all of the different tournament types, not just melee, and it retools how the prize system works. In the base game, the prize you win from a tournament is randomly selected from a pool of items within a certain price range. With tournaments expanded, you can re-roll what that prize will be, and even pick from a selection of three different items. It'll also allow the tournament to pull from the inventory of the town where it's happening to use as prizes, which makes sense and just generally gives you a bit more leeway with how you can go about tournaments in Bannerlord. Okay, 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 this one... This one is just because I'm impatient and lazy. Leo Harlequin's Hideout Player Party Limit Removed mod does what it says on the tin. It removes the player party limit when engaging bandit hideouts. In the base game, it's capped at 10? I can't even remember because I've had this mod since it came out three days after the game did. It's a bit more customizable now and Leo Harlequin has included versions of the mod that set different caps, like a max party size of 15, 20 or 30. I still have the one that just completely removes the cap though because I'm terrible and enjoy putting the 30 bandits at any given settlement through a 200 strong meat grinder. If you've seen my previous coverage of Mountain Blade Battle Lord, you'll know that, while I understand the pacing of the game is meant to prolong the sense of progression and enjoyment you get out of it, everything is just too damn slow for me, particularly how fast you gain experience and level up your skills. The Global Experience Multiplier mod by Nick Million slaps a 2 times multiplier on pretty much everything XP related in the game, for you at least. As per the example that Nick Million provides, having a global modifier of 2, a vigor skill category modifier of 2, and a one-handed modifier of 2 means your experience gain from one-handed weapons is increased by 8 times. If you want to see more of what Bannerlord has to offer without it consuming your entire life, then get this mod. Once in a while, a game will come along that's just so perfect for modding that I get a little bit hog wild and download as many as I can. First it was Skyrim and being able to turn all of the dragons into Macho Man Randy Savage. Then it was Fallout New Vegas and being able to smoke the in-game cigarettes like the edgy troubled courier that I am. Bannerlord is absolutely one of those games, not only because it's interesting to see this early on in development what the people playing the game think needs adding or changing before Tale Worlds have even finished, but also because it really does a good job of showcasing just how clever and passionate people can be. If you enjoyed this mod spotlight for Bannerlord, why not give it a like and subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun while you're down there. Scroll a little bit further and you'll find the comments where you can let us know about your favourite Bannerlord mods and ask any questions about modding the game, which I can try to answer for you. Cheers very much for watching and hopefully see you again soon.